This is the first video in a new category called Head to Head, where we compare similar radiologic appearances to talk about the differential diagnoses. Our first topic is hyperdense secretions in the sinuses. This series is dedicated to my mentor in head and neck radiology, Jane Weissman, who loved to teach in this manner. So here's the deal. I show you two pictures of two different patients with two different diseases, but similar radiologic findings. At this point in the video, you should pause the video. Seriously, pause the video and see if you can decide what the diagnosis is in each of these two different patients. I'll wait. Okay, I'm going to show you one more picture of this patient just to give you uh, another look, one cut down. But the same idea is there. Now let's talk about these images. What are we doing here? We're talking about hyperdense secretions within the paranasal sinuses. The differential diagnosis for hyperdense material within the paranasal sinus includes fungal infections. Remember, there's three different types. There's invasive fungal sinusitis, there's allergic fungal sinusitis, and there's mycetoma. All three of those share hyperdense material within the sinuses, although there are other imaging features that distinguish them. Inspissated secretions, anytime they've been there a long time, they can become hyperdense. And polyps, some, not all, some polyps are hyperdense relative to the surrounding mucosa. A lot of people like to include blood on this differential diagnosis. I don't usually do that because it's so much more dense than the other things on this list, and it's usually not in the same differential. Now let's go back to these images. Maybe you want to pause this video again and remembering that differential diagnosis, try and come up with what you think is going on. When I look at this picture, I see a particular configuration to the hyperdense material. It fills the sinus, but there is a rim all the way around of hypodense material. This is the preserved mucosa, and this is secretions within the center of the sinus. This can either be inspissated secretions if they've been there a long time, or this can be fungal superinfection. This happens to be an immunocompromised patient, and this sinus looked clear a week ago, so that's going to clue us into the fact that we're dealing with a, a fungal superinfection. There's no evidence of an invasive fungal sinusitis, but this patient's obviously at risk. Now let's turn our attention to this patient. In this situation, the configuration of the hyperdense material is different. This is not inside a sinus. It's extending from the sinus out into the nasal cavity. It's expanding the drainage pathway. It has a rounded configuration that looks like a polypoid mass. That's because this is indeed an inflammatory polyp that has grown out of the sphenoid sinus, expanded the sphenoethmoidal recess, and extended into the nasal cavity. So based on the difference in configuration between these hyperdense uh, materials, we can suggest that this is actually an inflammatory polyp, and this is fungal superinfection.